at current prices, there's not enough gold out there. I see. So they're going to have to reprice gold much, much higher. I mean, if they want to use uh, 20% backing, or I think 40% is the number being tossed around, I don't think it would be higher than that. But if they want to do a, a 40% backing to the currency that's going to settle trade all over the world, you're talking about a number that's very that's multiples of what you know the current twenty four hundred dollar gold price is, um, and yeah, they they did go radio silent for probably four or five years. And I think what they were doing basically was working be, behind the scenes to prepare for where we are now. Mm. I mean, you have pretty much half the world at this point already uh, joining or requesting to join the BRICS. Today, we're diving into a crucial conversation with financial analyst Bill Holter, known for his insights on gold, silver, and the global economic landscape. In this detailed discussion, Holter explains why gold and silver are essential in today's financially unstable world, the impending chaos he predicts, and practical steps to safeguard your wealth and well-being. Let's get started. Many people buy gold and silver, anticipating that their prices will rise and bring them wealth. However, Holter emphasizes that this is not the primary reason to own these precious metals. According to him, gold and silver are vital because they remain valuable even in a bankrupt system. His former business partner, Jim Sinclair, used to say that from a monetary standpoint, gold and silver will be the last two men standing. Holter predicts chaos in the financial system, suggesting that something will eventually force the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates. However, he believes that long-term interest rates can only go up due to the lack of risk premium in the current 5% rate. He explains that the risk of default, either through non-payment or currency debasement, is not adequately reflected in this rate. Holter points out that the US Treasury is already spending over a trillion dollars a year on interest, essentially borrowing to pay interest, akin to moving from one credit card to another. This situation aligns with Richard Russell's concept of inflate or die, where the system must keep piling on debt to create money supply, leading to an inevitable collapse without new money. Halter argues that the Federal Reserve and the Treasury have become one entity, with the Federal Reserve funding whatever debt the Treasury needs. He questions how long it will take before a significant event, either a false flag or a real incident, disrupts the system. He speculates that this could happen between now and the next election, casting doubt on the likelihood of the election occurring as scheduled. Holter highlights recent events, such as bombings, to illustrate the volatility of the current geopolitical landscape. He questions the readiness of the BRICS currency to become a global settlement currency, but believes they could quickly adapt if needed. Holter stresses that there isn't enough gold at current prices to support such a system, necessitating a much higher gold price to back currencies adequately. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more expert insights and analysis. A lot of people have purchased gold and silver because they want to get wealthy, because they're going to go up. Well, that's not the reason to own gold and silver. The reason to own gold and silver is because they cannot bankrupt in a system that is bankrupting. And I mean, my, my uh, past business partner, Jim Sinclair, used to say that uh, when all was said and done, from a monetary standpoint, gold and silver will be the last two men standing. Well, there there will be um, there will be chaos. Um, it's my opinion that something will break and force the Federal Reserve to cut rates. Um, but longer term, interest rates have no direction to go but up, not down. Because as things stand right now at five percent, there's almost no. Uh, well, there is no uh, risk premium in that number of, of a 5% interest rate. There's no risk premium to account for the risk of default. And default can be one of two things, either non-payment or debasing the currency to make it easier to, to, to pay that debt back. And we're at the point now where uh, the interest, and just look at the U.S. Treasury. We're over a trillion dollars a year now on interest. So we're at the point where the, the treasury is actually, uh, I guess in a way, borrowing 
to be able to afford to pay the interest. It's like moving from one credit card to another. Yeah. And then, then the question becomes, uh, because, and this goes back to Richard Russell's inflate or die. They cannot stop piling debt on the system because debt is the way that they create money supply. So they, it's, it's a Ponzi scheme and any Ponzi scheme that doesn't get new money coming in collapses. And that's where we are now. They have to, we're at the point where exponentially they have to increase debt just to keep the status quo going. So I just think that um, the Federal Reserve has lost complete control. If they're already monetizing the debt, I mean, the Treasury and Federal Reserve are one entity now. They're not even two entities. And they've been combined. So basically, the Federal Reserve is going to fund whatever debt that the Treasury needs. Mm -hmm. And I guess to answer your question, how long, um, I would just reply to that. How long before there's some type of false flag or real event that kicks the table over? As far as uh, the timing, I think the timing is between now and the election. And I mean, I'm, I'm on mm -hmm. that as timing because I don't think, uh, and as things stand right now, I don't think we can have an election. Because if we have an election, um, then those in power will lose power and, and justice will at some point be served. So I don't think we're going to have an election. Um, I mean, I started back in in uh, November, December saying I thought it was a coin flip. And I think there's only a, I don't know, 25, 30% chance that we have an election at this point. So from a timing standpoint, I think things blow up between now and the election. And look at what just happened. I mean, they just bombed a beach. Yeah. And, you know, killed killed 100 people. I mean, what happens? Well, what would happen if uh, uh, and, and bombs were dropping on the beach in the United States? What would the reaction be? So, and I guess the other thing you got to look at is, are they ready to take the baton and become a a settlement currency? Is the BRICS currency ready? I don't know what the answer is, yes or no, mm -hmm. but I think it's close. And if something happens and they're not ready, they'll get ready real quick. I mean, things will, and that's the way capitalism is. They'll make it work. It's This is not a stumbling block. This is easily fixed. Mm -hmm. But at current prices, there's not enough gold out there. I see. So they're going to have to reprice gold much, much higher. I mean, if they want to use 20% uh, backing, or I think 40% is the number being tossed around, I don't think it would be higher than that. But if they want to do a 40% a backing to the currency that's going to settle trade all over the world, you're talking about a number that's very, it's multiples of what, you know, the current $2,400 gold price is um and yeah they they did go radio silent for probably four or five years and i think what they were doing basically was working be behind the scenes to prepare for where we are now mm. i mean you have pretty much half the world at this point already uh joining or requesting to join the BRICS. So, I mean, that shows you right there, the dollar is not coming into the system, the dollar is being moved out of the system. And your point about the rule of law, the, the rule of law is the reason the United States and the military, the rule of law and the military are the reasons that the United States attracted so much capital. Mm -hmm. Now, the rule of law has been broken and our military, I mean, we, we have generals running around in dresses. So, you know, you got a one-two punch there. The miners are going to, I think when all is said and done, the miners will make stock market history. The only problem with that, though, is if you have an account with a broker and you buy stock, and when this shithouse comes down, you're going to end up losing your stock. Mm. And I, what I'm talking about here is the great taking. When, when you own stock, uh, it is not your stock. It's on the broker's balance sheet. And if the broker is tied up with 
uh, derivatives, whether they win or lose, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the broker is going to unload. Uh, the, 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 the shares are already unloaded to their balance sheet, but they're going to inform you that those aren't your shares anymore. So if you're going to trade mining stocks, and I again, I think they will make stock market history, you better have your stock certificates. Otherwise, you know, you, you don't have anything. The shift away from the US dollar is evident, with many countries seeking to join BRICS. Halter attributes the historical attraction of capital to the US to the rule of law and military strength. However, he argues that both have deteriorated, diminishing the country's appeal as a safe haven for capital. Halter believes that miners will make stock market history, but he warns about the risks involved. He explains that owning stocks through brokers means the stocks are on the broker's balance sheet, making them vulnerable during a financial crisis. He advises direct registration of shares and obtaining physical stock certificates to secure one's investments. What you do is you tell your broker you want to direct register the shares. Direct register means electronically move the shares from the broker to the transfer agent. Once that's done, then you go to your transfer agent and you say, I want my physical stock certificate. And generally, they'll charge you 20, 25 bucks to get the certificate. Brokers will tell you, oh, it costs $500 or whatever. That's not true. They, they want to retain the assets. And the reason they want to retain the assets goes back to the great taking. Once you buy stock, they, they immediately turn around and they lend that stock out. I mean, how do you think your broker makes money if you're going through a discount broker for $7.95? How are these guys running around in Lamborghinis and, and jet planes right. if they're charging $7.95 per trade? The reason being, they take your stock, that they didn't cost them anything at all, and they'll charge whatever, uh, whatever the interest rate is at the time. And there are mining companies where, because they're so heavily shorted and they, there's not the float out there for them to borrow, there's mining stocks that charge, uh, brokers will charge 20, 30, 50% interest. That's how they make your make their money. Not on a 795, you pay them for, for moving a quarter of a million dollars. Halter emphasizes the importance of preparedness, not just in financial terms, but also in basic survival needs. Gold and silver won't be helpful if you're not alive, he notes. He outlines essential preparations, including having clean water, electricity, food, and means of protection. He recommends stockpiling at least two years worth of food, having a way to purify water, and ensuring a reliable source of electricity, such as solar power, backed up by generators. In a crisis, Halter believes that personal safety will be paramount. He advocates for having firearms and night vision equipment and stresses the importance of being in a secure, less populated area. He also highlights the necessity of first aid supplies and having knowledgeable individuals in your group to handle medical emergencies. Well, gold and silver is no good if you're not alive. Yeah. So, I mean, you're going to have to live through a, a complete firestorm. And part of living is you need clean water, you need electricity, you need food, you need a way to protect your food, your position. Uh, I mean, basically, your mindset should be you've got to get out and away from a population. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, think about this. Once credit dries up, there's not going to be anything in grocery stores. There's not going to be any food. And I'm not talking about shortages. I'm talking about complete shutdown, like within 72 hours. Think about when a hurricane comes. Go to your grocery store. A few a, a day, two days before a hurricane, it's empty. The shelves have been cleaned out because there's not little elves in the back room that bake loaves of bread and can bake beans for you. Um, so you need to prep ahead of time. You need you need food, and at this point, I think you need two years worth of food for every person that's going to be in your compound. Um, you need a way to purify water because without water you can't live. Without water, you can't you generally can't cook. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can, you know, uh, shoot a deer and, and process it and cook it. You don't need water for that. But 
if you've got rice, beans, whatever, you need water and it needs to be clean water. Um, you need a, somehow, you need some way for electricity. Do you go the, uh, the generator route or do you go the solar route? I have uh, generators as backup, but I've gone the solar route and my only fear on that would be an EMP. Mm. So, and, and lead, I mean, you've got to have guns, you've got to have firearms, you should have night vision. Um, I mean, you're going to be on your own. Nine, you can dial 911 and it's going to ring all day long and nobody's going to be there to answer it. And I've done, I've actually spoken to probably two dozen uh, law enforcement officers, whether it's you know local cops or state cops or whatever. And I'm going to tell you that 90% of those people, when I ask them the question, when this shit house comes down, what are you going to do? 90% of them have told me, I'm going to be with my family, protecting my family. They're not going to be out there, uh, you know, protecting you. And one other thing you need is uh, you do need, you do need first aid supplies and having someone knowledgeable in that field in your, your group would be a good thing. 